So that's how we do our equipment duty verification. So obviously we don't want to do that interactively one equipment at a time. So what I'm going to do is left mouse click, drag this up to the top. I am going to zoom out full with this little button. I am going to go to my uh, um, report and I'm going to say I want a equipment duty report and I'm also going to create another low voltage report so you can see that. So when I select OK, it just tells me my report options changed. And then what I'm going to do is click this little button and everything is going to turn blue and red. That's our, our batch fault button. It's all interactive. You're going to see the one line collapse as I do that. And then I'm going to come down and look at my equipment duty calculations. I'm going to increase the size on this just a little bit so you can see it better. And these equipment duty calculations are really si slick. This is Article 400.5 and 400.6. It tells us the manufacturer, the type and style of equipment. It tells us the test standard that it was rated on. It tells us the rating of the device based on this test standard. Then what it does is it calculates um, the actual current through the device, line side or load side, whatever's greatest. It applies the appropriate multipliers based on this test standard, the calculated X over R ratio of the device. So now you have the calculation of the current based on the same method that this was rated on. And so now you can compare them directly. In this case, it tells you it's 42% overdutied. This one is in violation, and it flags it in red. This um, device in MCC3A is flagged in gold because it's not overdutied. It's at a warning level. And so now you have a complete output report telling us all the problems in the system, what we're going to have to correct, what equipment is going to have to be upgraded, and now you can write your report to management. We make it super easy. You can left mouse click and uh, do a file print. Or we can right mouse click, export to Excel, export to Word, open Office, or copy and paste to any Windows program and write your report to management. We use the latest Microsoft XML standard for exporting all, all of our data in these files. Um, it works really well. Um, and, you know, you can customize colors and things like that. Now, if we look at our high voltage momentary reports, you can see, okay, we can model the symmetric or we can get at the symmetrical X over R ratio, multiplying factor, asymmetrical. We can have the old breaker duty amps or the new crest values, um, depending on which standard you want to use. Here's our branch contributions. Um, this is just a typical high voltage report. We don't have time to look at all the 25 different report options. Um, here's a low voltage report where we get in our symmetrical, our X over R, our multiplying factor, our asymmetrical amps, the different equipment duty amps based on the X over R test ratio and the type of device it is, um, and then branch contributions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the uh, reports. I'm going to click off the reports. And I'm going to zoom into an area. You'll see where we have lots of red. Now, notice that this um, device or this switchgear lineup um, has all these breakers that are overdutied. So these are problem areas. Notice that this tie is closed. Okay. So what happens if we want to open the tie? Well, almost every program in the world, you go to go out to the database, open the tie, read it, read it back in, get a batch fault, scroll down through all the pages and find out what the um, information is. So 20 minutes later, you get your result. In Easy Power, it's all dynamic. It's all interactive. You left mouse click, it automatically opens the tie. Our problems go away. Close the tie with a left mouse click, and um, there's our problems. If we want to open this tie, we just double click and it's closed or open. So it really gives you the ability to do shutdown planning, what if cases, any type of scenario that you choose. And we'll get into scenarios later. We can do actually do up to 99 different scenarios um, 
in a in a system. Now, the other thing we want to look at is this little button, which allows us to look at the currents. Okay, so now you see exactly what currents are flowing through this tie. If I open the tie, it drops to 39. If I close the tie, it's 78. What happens up above this system based on this fault down here at 40 volts? Well, I could left mouse click. I could go to this little button, click on it. This is remote voltages and currents. And now you can see that for a fault down here at 40 volts, my primary voltage dropped to 88 percent. I have 920 amps flowing through the fuse, 1230 amps flowing back around through this other day, um, uh, daisy chain transformer. Well, let's zoom out full with this little button. I'm going to highlight an area and see what happens because of this fault down here. I'm going to right mouse click and hit remote voltages and currents. And then I'm going to use this little rubber rectangular zoom button and we'll zoom in to the primary. So for that 480 volt fault down in the middle of nowhere of the system, there's 1,060 amps flowing through um, the main incoming utility transformer for this power system. If I scroll over, notice that the main bus voltage dropped to 89%. There's 1,200 amps through the tie. My generator is outputting 860 amps through the voltage restraint backup relaying, and so I can tell exactly when this is going to trip. So you can see the powerful features that are in Easy Power. In just a couple mouse clicks, we can troubleshoot any type of problem available um, that is typical to a short circuit system. You know, including you know setting all relays for 3i0 and and uh, directional overcurrent relays and things.